Now it's time to meet a new animal. The new animal is the okapi. The okapi is a member of the giraffe family. It is about five feet high at the shoulders and has a long neck. His front legs look longer than his back legs. The okapi is reddish brown and its legs are marked with creamy white stripes and bands. Its face is creamy white but its nose and pointed ears are deep brown or black. The male okapi has short horns. The okapi does not like to live around the other animals. It lives in the jungle and is usually found in the parts of the jungle where there are very few other animals. The Story of Owen Okepi Owen Okepi lived with his family far from the other animals in a remote part of the jungle. Okepi are a lot like giraffes. They are tall and heavy creamy white stripes on their legs. The Okepi family are not exactly unfriendly. They just choose homes away from the other animals. One day, all the young animals were frolicking together in a clearing in the jungle. They found a strange home. No animal they had ever known made such a burrow. There was a brown hut of some kind. Lots of shiny tin things hanging about and the scent of some animal that was entirely strange to them. What kind of new creature had come to the jungle? There was not a movement around the strange home they had found. Suddenly, through the forest, they could hear footsteps. Was the strange new creature coming back to its home? The little animals scattered quickly. In a few moments, you would not have been able to see a single furry creature. They had all disappeared, but there were little eyes peering out from the dark places, watching to see what the new creature looked like. Owen Okepi was one of the watching animals, and what a surprising sight he saw. A creature that walked on its hind legs came into view, followed by its mate, also walking on its hind legs, and a little cub walked between them. If you had seen them, you would have called them a man, woman, and child, but Owen Okepi did not know that was what they were. After all, he had been back in his own corner of the jungle most of his life. Here, son, the man said to the little boy, let's make a telephone. A telephone? Out here? Dad, I didn't know you could make a telephone, said the boy. Oh, I can do a lot of things that might surprise you. Get mother to let you have two empty cans. Here are two I rinsed clean just this morning, the woman said, and they have no sharp jagged edges. That's exactly what we need. Now, son, watch. I will make a hole right in the center of the bottom of each can. That's how you make a telephone? asked the boy. Just wait, you will see. Now, I will take this string and put it through the hole. 
he threaded it through the hole in the bottom of the can, making a knot on the end, so that the string stopped when it came to the end. Now, I will put the other end of the string through the other can. Here, let me do it. I can do it, the boy eagerly said. And he could. He threaded the end through the hole tied a knot in the string and pulled it through until it stopped, just as his father had. Here is what the cans and string now looked like. Now, son, our telephone is ready to talk on. That's a telephone? Dad, you're teasing me. No, I'm not. Here, you take this can and run over to the edge of the clearing. Hold the string tightly and put the can up to your ear. Now listen. The boy did as his father said and copped a can around his ear just as if it were a telephone. Holding the string tight, the father placed his can up to his mouth. Hello there, son. The boy let out a whoop. I can hear you, I can hear you, he yelled. Dad, you did make a telephone. Don't yell at me, son. Use the telephone. Talk into your can now, and I will listen with my can. It worked. He did not have to yell or even talk very loudly. Somehow, the tight string carried the sound of his voice, and his father could hear him though he was way over by the tent. This is really fun, Dad, he said into the can. It's a neat telephone. I really got a smart dad. Owen Okepi peeked out from under a big rubber plant. What fun the two new creatures were having. He decided he wanted to play the same game. He watched carefully, not knowing the man and boy were watching him too. When the father and son wound up the string, they placed the telephone carefully under a tree so he could see just where it was. After they went into the tent that night, they could hear a little rustling in the jungle and they knew young Owen Okapi had gotten himself the telephone they had left for him. The next day, Owen Okapi joined the other young animals at the water hole. Look what I've got, he said. Oh, I've seen tin cans before, yawned the lion cub. Lots of hunters leave them around their campsites. Sometimes you can get a lick of pretty good food out of them. Have you ever tell a telephone before? Owen Okapi asked. Telephone? What's that? said the young lion. I don't know. It's some way you play with it. And it looked like the creatures using it were having a lot of fun. All the animals looked at Owen Okapi. Don't you know what those creatures were? No, said Owen Okapi. We don't have any like that back where I live. That was a man, Owen Okapi. You have to be careful of some creatures like that. Well, they were kind, that's all I can say. Owen Okapi was shy, but he wanted to make friends. It was easier, he thought, just to keep quiet. But one could never make friends that way. Should he take the chance? He decided to try. Let's play anyway, Owen Okapi said. Who wants to be my friend and try to talk on the telephone? How scared Owen Okapi was that no one would play with him. He smiled just a little bit of a smile. Please, he said. I'll play with you, Owen Okapi, said the little tiger. And I will too, said the frog and the little monkey. Soon, all the animals were playing with Owen Okapi. He had lots of friends because he decided to be friendly. Now, I am not going to tell you that the animals learned to talk on the little boy's telephone 
because they never did really do that. But what fun they had with the two cans and the string. They threw the cans and got tangled up in the string and had a great time. One time, Oweno Cappy even tried to show them how the little box had held the can to his mouth and said, Hello. His friends liked to pretend they were talking to Oweno Cappy on the telephone. One thing was true, Oweno Cappy always had many friends after that because he tried to be friendly and that little boy never knew how much fun the animals had with the gift he gave. If you feel you do not have any friends or that you cannot talk as well as someone else or that you don't have clothes as nice as others, then you especially need to know how to make friends. This is what the Bible says about making friends. A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. Proverbs 18.24 If you want a friend, you must be a friend. Everyone needs a smile and a friendly word. Be a friend to other people not to just those you admire, but especially those who need your friendship. A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. Proverbs 18.24 Ready? Sing. Oh, and oh, Cappy lived all alone, but made new friends with a strange telephone. Oh, Cappy reads. Oh, oh. O, O reads, O, O, O.